everybody, I'm Father Pete McCormick, joined by my co-host Lynette Wookie. And this is our episode of One Big Question. You might be wondering, why is it that we're on the floor of the Purcell Pavilion? So Lynette, why are we on the floor of the Purcell Pavilion? Because sports are back. This weekend we have volleyball and basketball, and you students get to come here in person to see it. And that's all because of supplemental testing, which leads to our one big question of the week, why am I getting tested so much? To figure out that answer, let's start off the episode. Lynette, kick it off. So Father P, a lot of people have been wondering, and we've gotten a lot of questions on Instagram regarding supplemental testing, getting tested multiple times, even three times a week outside of their surveillance test. So this week's one big question is, why am I getting tested so much? And I will let you introduce our awesome guest. So in order to get this information, we went to a man who has all of the facts, but more importantly, before the facts, he's also from my hometown of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Later, we can talk about the fact that we went to rival high schools, but that is not what One Big Question is about. It's about unity and bringing people together. So ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, so honored to be joined by Mike Seaman, who serves in the following capacity as the Vice President for Campus Safety and University Operations. Mike, welcome to One Big Question. Thanks, Father Pete. Thanks, Lynette. I'm honored to be here. Thanks for having me having me on today. This is great. Of course. Welcome. Yeah, and we just wanted to get you on to answer the One Big Question of the week. Why am I getting tested so much? Yeah, it's it, you know it's it's a great question, and and I'm I'm so happy people bring it up, and and let's just tackle it. Let's get right into it. I, I think what we see on our whole COVID platform is testing's key, right? Do we have do we have the virus on campus, and how prevalent is it? How widespread is it? And what will we do for our, our health and safety standards? So that's number one. And, and so clearly this semester versus the fall, we started seeing it with what? The Clemson game week with exit testing of getting that cadence of testing everybody regularly once a week, which is awesome. Well, then now we also have this thing called supplemental testing, right? You could be called to get supplemental testing. And I think the best comparator that I, that I can make on it is number one is Surveillance testing, when you're scheduled for your one day a week, goes across the whole campus community, right? It's, it's the broad spectrum. It covers everybody to see what's going on. What we're doing with supplemental, think of a more laser targeted approach. So if we see in a particular dorm or a particular section or floor of a dorm or in a class or in a, a group setting or an athletic team or whatever the case may be, where we're getting more positive, you know, or seniors or sophomores or freshmen. This allows the group, the team to say, hey, there might be something going on there. Let's test a bigger concentric circle around that group and see what's happening. So think of surveillance testing across the broad spectrum of all Notre Dame and think of the supplemental of targeted, okay, something might be happening here. We want to know before it spreads, before it spreads throughout a dorm or throughout a group. So those two together give you a very comprehensive look. And I know, I hear it, you guys hear it. Oh, I, I don't wanna have to go again. <laughs> well, we're trying to make it as convenient as we can. And God bless that team over in the Joy Center, the, the saliva team, the surveillance team, the student workers there, the staff, the nurses, the ushers. Um, we're trying to make it as simple as we can. And um, I know you guys have tested, I test every other week as a faculty staff member. We're trying to make it easy, quick, convenient, but um, it's really for the health of the community because if we get a proliferation of positive cases, then we're gonna have to become more restrictive in our activities and what we're doing. And we're trying to open and make sure that this is, we're, we're as open and as vibrant as we can be. So sorry for the long answer, but this is something we really care about and we really love. No, thank you for the long answer, absolutely. And I, I mean, I haven't personally gotten tested, like gotten the supplemental testing, but I know a lot of my friends have been wondering that. And I think their other issue kind of with it, and maybe you can speak to this, is people get like maybe 24 hours notice. <laughs> um, so can people get more lead in time? What's kind of the, the practices behind when you get tested and then, or when you get called and then when you get tested? That's a great question, Lynette, that, that, and it's a common question. So this supplemental testing, like we described, is very laser targeted, and it's reacting to what's happening in an area, a concentrated area. Again, use a floor of a dorm or a section of a dorm, just as, a, as one example. Well, 
as we're getting real time results of people who are turning positive because, you know, the saliva test comes back in less than a day. Um, so we're getting results back in not real time, but pretty short period of time. And this, we want to pivot off of those results. So if we pick a dorm, uh, you know, any dorm and say, okay, we see something happening on the second floor of that dorm. Well, then we could be able to do some additional testing for those people there. So we can react quickly. Cause if we don't react quickly and think of like four or five days later, think of how many other people could possibly be infected. And then next thing you know, the concentric circles keep getting you know, bigger and bigger and more people are infected. So the idea is to react quickly and um, to isolate any possible you know, um, infection, if you may. So it's just another, and so we don't know that until the results of the following day or the previous day come up, right? So, so what you'll see on the supplemental testing, it's the reaction to the, like the next day or the day before that of what we're seeing across campus. And um, the testing platform is so sophisticated, right? That they are, doc, can I do a shout out on this? Can I do a doc, shout out to Dr. <laughs> Mike Frender and everybody in that saliva lab? Um, they are just blessings. They are all stars that they can take, you know, all 1800 to 2000 saliva tests a day and turn them around a result in less than, you know, most times 12 to 18 hours. And uh, to be able to do that, that just helps us stay safe. So that's why I think Lynette and Father Pete, people are getting, it's a quick, you know, hey, you need to come the next day is because we're reacting to what's been happening and what those results are telling us. So um, it's proving to be very effective right now um, compared to the first semester. So we would love to give you more time, but we're just trying to do our best to keep everybody safe and, and healthy. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and thank you so much for that. I feel a lot safer. Uh, Father Pete, do you have any uh, follow-up questions? Maybe one last question to uh, ask Mike Seaman. I do, Lynette. And, and Mike, as, as you think about the, the remainder of the semester, do you see this type of adaptive testing evolving at all? Or do you anticipate that this is likely where we're at and that you feel like we've hit a good cadence? I, that's a great question, Father Pete. I think we're in a good cadence. I think, you know, what are we in our fourth or fifth week now of classes uh, since February 3rd? And what we're seeing is it's evolving nicely. Um, the the test site at the Joyce Center, the saliva lab, and um, the analysis that we're being able to do is we feel like we've hit a, a really good rhythm. And, you know, like you guys, we watch the dashboard every day. We know exactly how many positive cases we have on campus. We know where they're at. Um, and we're just trying to react to make sure that it's staying contained because, you know, here we are, we're finally in March. Thank, thank God we're finally in March. Um, you know, longer days, sunnier days, the vaccines coming out, you know, there's a lot of hope in the spring semester. I keep saying that. Um, but I think our testing protocols and our regimen is really allowing the university to do this safely and, and, and get into this semester. So I like what we're doing. Um, we will, we, we, we reserve the right to adjust it along the way based on what we're seeing in, in terms of positive numbers or positive cases. But I think right now we're, everybody's hitting their stride. And, and I just gotta thank the students. I gotta thank the faculty, staff. I just gotta thank all of our community members. Um, this isn't just the testing site or the docs in UHS or the contact tracing team or the um, uh, quarantine isolation team. This is all of us. And, um, and if everyone just does their little part in terms of being able to get tested quickly, you know, it just makes us, it's just gonna allow us to get on into the semester. So thank you to everybody. I, um, I know it can be inconvenient at times, but we're trying our best to make it as easy as possible for everyone. Well, Mike, as we prepare to wrap up, I, I just wanna also express my thanks uh, to you for your leadership and the work that you've done. You're always so gracious to, to jump on these types of calls and to make sure that you're sharing uh, the, the most relevant information with our community. So on behalf of myself and Lynette and all those who listened to us here on One Big Question, thank you for your leadership and service to Notre Dame. Thank you, guys. It's a great blessing in my life and to be working alongside all of our colleagues. There's over 400 people in the COVID response unit working you know, around the clock, literally. So it, it's a huge blessing. Father Pete, we're going to call you for testing seven days a week for the next <laughs> <one>. <laughs> I'll be ready. I'll, I'll be, be ready. ready with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for being on the show. Thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to reach out and follow us on Instagram at Notre Dame and Twitter. We're taking your questions. We want them answered. We're going to get you experts. We're going to get you answers. Thank you for watching One Big Question and have a great week, everybody.